thank you very, very much for uh, coming here uh, um, today. I'm, I'm really glad that all of you are here. And I just will open with a couple of words before um, we get started. Pamela um, did a magnificent way into introducing me, so I would say that I'm, I'm a presidential scholar for Society in Neuroscience here in Colombia, and I'm working here with Ana Maria Ochoa and Sarah Woolley on cross-cultural audition. Um, and to get us started, I want to play you some disgusting sounds. So I'm going to play that. Hopefully it will work. What was it? So some of you may guess this is the um, soundtrack of the movie Alien from 1979, an iconic movie. And back to back, the trailer for the 2017 uh, sequel that is Chum coming uh, this month on the cinema. <laughs> and uh, so let's, get a, uh, let's take a look on the video. Hopefully it will work um, of the scene. So that's the, the video with the sound. All right, so I'm sure you could tell that these sounds um, are aimed to uh, create a disgusting, uh, striking, repulsive non-human sources, right? So they, they immediately appeal to our most basic biological instincts. They're triggering disgust and fear. How do they achieve this? Do these sounds have a specific property that have enhanced effect on our body? Or alternatively, do they also depict our society's anxiety with biological mutations? So this is kind of setting um, the, 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 the starting point for this was this seminar. And I, um, in the previous conversation that I had with, with the speakers, I want to ask as a, be as a beginning, as a starting point, are the mechanisms by which we engage with sound influenced by biology or culture? And by this I mean, is hearing determined by the anatomy of the ear, the wiring of the brain? Or does it relate to learned experiences that are specific to culture and context. Okay, I have a spoiler alert. The answer to this question is, I'll tell you it right away, right? It's determined by both. So um, the refined questions that will come out of this question is under which conditions and context is our engagement with sound more determined by biology or by culture? Do we tend to use biological mechanisms when we process sounds that were important for our evolutionary survival? For example, the sound of water. Or a sound of a lion. Right? By the way, anybody recognize this lion? Yes, okay. So definitely Lodi, that, not, that lion was not part of our evolutionary exposure. <laughs> Another refined question Another refined question is the features of, of sound that are more affected by biology of culture. And some research have argued that certain sounds are processed differently in an auditory system, triggering a reaction that has been imprinted over the course of evolution. One example is sound that contains a lot of high frequency, sharp sound, or have energy fluctuation, these are rough sounds, and I'll play you those sounds. So this is awful, right? And I'll play you once more. Okay, so they're annoying, right? And Tim's group actually found that it's not only you, everybody finds them quite annoying. And he will talk about more about those annoying sounds. All right, so this is something consistent across uh, or across individuals, so maybe it has a biologically determined mechanism. Another example is, um, is cute sounds, 
Okay, so these are high frequency sounds that are believed to affect us as a result of our uh, caring for infants. And I, you know, play you that. Okay. So to address this question, we have invited experts from three different fields to join us here today. Neuroscience aspires to understand the biological aspect of the brain from a single neuron to brain regions up to integrated percept by studying mechanisms that are common to all humans and shared with other animals. Tim is going to talk today on his work on, um, with people with misophonia. These are individuals with extreme negative emotional reaction to sound like breathing or eating, something that has inspired a lot of alien sounds in movies. And he's found that their brain is wired differently, thereby providing um, a biological explanation or starting of a biological explanation to this phenomenon. Okay? And sound studies, on the other hand, is an interdisciplinary framework in the humanities that explore culturally dependent boundaries between music and noise, as well as auditory environments beyond music. As a discipline, it focuses more on the specific idiosyncratic features of a given time, a given location, and a given social context. It tries to understand the effect of factors such as beliefs, ideology, power structure, as well as technology, economy, and media on hearing. Anna will talk today about an example of how culture completely transforms the perception of sound. She will describe a case study um, which Spaniard and Creole in Colombia experienced certain sounds, the same sound, human imitation of animal sounds or something more complex, you'll describe that in more details, in a very different way so than indigenous and Afro-descendant peoples. So they were listening to the same sounds, having a very different experience. Music cognition is somehow in between. It is an empirical field that studies the high-level processing of sounds through methodologies of cognitive psychology. Its main focus is processes that are very often unique to humans. However, music cognition tries to find unifying principles that are not idiosyncratic to the individual, such as repetition, and here I really recommend Lisa's books on repeat, which is kind of a foundational principle of cognitive processing and, and music processing. Today, Lisa will tell us about extremely consistent response across individuals for a description of musical excerpts. So these are verbal descriptions that are extremely surprisingly consistent across individuals. Okay, so there is an inherent interdisciplinary gap here. Neuroscience speaks about spike strains, order to transduction, activation parameter, uh, co connectivity between brain region, and sound studies talks about ethnography, about technology, about media, um, and music cognition speaks about timbre, melody, rhythm, and meter. So it's not going to be obvious to find a common thread between these, between these disciplines. So I'm going to propose just three possible things to kind of carry with you as we progress in the talks, kind of common threads that connect across disciplines. So the first one is the shared feature of the humans and the animals. So neuro neuroscience is interested in biological mechanisms that are very often shared between humans and animals. A major part of our knowledge about audition comes from research in other animals such as primates and rats, and songbirds and frogs. So today we'll see an example of how sound studies can also extend beyond the human. Anna will speak about how indigenous population proposed a diffused view of the boundary between the human and the non-human, generalizing the sense of hearing not only across cultures but also across species. The next uh, thread is the effect of exposure. So a recurring theme in sound studies is how culture exposes shape auditory experiences. And uh, Lisa is going to go talk about that as well. But neuroscience also tells us that our brain is modulated by environmental and, experience, uh, and experiences. Tim will talk about today an, um, about an extreme case of malleable a malleability of the hippocampal formation in the brain of piano tuners. These are dramatic changes uh, in, in that, that, that exemplify how the brain is so much plastic and it's this plasticity resulting from repeated exposure and expertise and not only from genetics because, as you know, piano tuning is re relatively new in the evolutionary time course. Finally, I'd propose that we'll look about and think about context. 
Lisa will show us how empirical research reveals that specific contexts, such as what we are told about a piece, fundamentally change the experience of what we hear. As Lisa shows, this points not only to individual difference between humans, but also towards better understanding of the changing experiences of the same human in different contexts. So with all of this in mind, I hope we'll enjoy the seminar. And I'm looking, really looking forward to thinking together about sound from all those diverse and rich perspectives. And so